Welcome to Altium Designer 17's Advanced PCB Course Module on Creation and Use of Templates. There are schematic, PCB, draftsman, and project templates. Let's start with the schematic templates. Opening up the Top Sheet Template B schematic template file with the extension of SCHDOT, we see what looks like a normal schematic. While it looks normal, it in fact has some significant differences that are noteworthy. Starting with the reference zone lines, numbers, and letters, these can all be selected. Clicking on a line, we can move or delete it if we wanted. We can also add more graphic lines as needed. In fact, this is how the original template was created by adding graphic lines. When a schematic has a template added, all the elements in the template, the lines, the text, and the images, are added like a watermark to the SCH doc schematics, and they can't be selected. Looking at the title block in the bottom right of the page, we can see the Altium logo. Double-clicking on it shows that this is a graphic property window, and it used a JPEG file. And this was done using Place, Drawing Tools, and Graphic, like this. Looking a little closer, let's double-click on the asterisk next to the ENG text. Here we see the property window for this Place text, having an equal sign and the text Engineer. This is a local reference to the sheet parameter named engineer and allows for a sheet-by-sheet -sheet setting of this parameter, in this case, the engineer who was responsible for the schematic. Opening up this sheet's parameters, we see the engineer entry. This should already be familiar to you. The difference here with the template file is that this will be replicated on every sheet that references this template. To see the list of the available sheet-level parameters, Simply start to place a text string and hit tab. And now in that text area, enter an equal sign, and then you can use the pull down menu to select a local parameter or a standard defined parameter like current date. With project files, we can set project level global parameters that can be referenced by any and all of the schematic templates. To see this in action, double click on the bill of material entry doc underscore no underscore bom to open up its property window. We see again that this is a place text and it has a parameter that is set to the equals doc no bomb. This parameter is not defined at the sheet level, but would need to exist and be defined in the project files parameters. One thing to note, if you are creating a new schematic template, I would start with one that is similar to what you want, and then the first thing you would do is do a save as. And this is important, selecting the advanced schematic template SCHDOT file type. The default save, even for a template file, is the normal schematic. Normally, Altium wants or expects template files to be stored in the template directory, which is located under the user's public documents, Altium, your version number, and the templates directory. I always create and save my template files there, as that is the default template location in the preferences for Altium Designer. We will add two schematics to the size B template project that we had open. One named B top sheet and the other B sheet. We can add different templates to each. Start with the B top sheet and click on the design pull down menu, templates, general templates, and select choose another file. Navigate to the exercise templates and pick the top sheet template B template file. Now the update template window opens and we want to select just this document, so we can use a different template for the other schematic, and also we want to pick Replace All Matching Parameters to bring in from the template all of its parameters and their values. Click OK, and the template is loaded into this schematic. There can be more than one template used, and we will open the B sheet and add a different template to it, this time picking the next sheet template B, as you can see. We could have chosen a different size template if we wanted. Any template could be used. Let's save all at this point to update the project and save the schematic changes. Now that we've looked at schematic templates, let's turn our attention to PCB templates. Adding the existing PCB template file called B template PCB doc and opening it, we can look at the various parts. This file is a typical PCB file with added graphics and text placed on the various mechanical layers to provide a consistent look and content for the PCBs. With up to 32 mechanical layers possible, 
Consider having each layer assigned to a specific application like Fabrication Notes or Board Outline. Opening up the View Configuration window allows for editing the layer names as well as enabling hidden layers. In particular, unchecking the Only Show Enabled mechanical layers allows the user to enable layers previously hidden as they were not originally enabled. I normally edit one of the layers and call it Board Outline as the fab houses that I use look for that particular named layer. Clicking on the Show box sets it and the Enable boxes. Double-clicking on the Color block opens up the color options where you can change the board layer color. To get the PCB to look more like an MCAD drawing, use the Design Board options and enable the background sheet, configuring it to fit to the PCB. The Board Options window has the display sheet in this case already checked, which is why there was a white background showing already. Here we are disabling the sheet to show the effect. Returning to the original state, we will continue. If desired, unchecking the auto-sized linked layers would allow us to manually set the position and size of the white background sheet. If desired, you could also import a DXF file to provide the graphics for the PCB template. Again, you would want to make sure when you did the import that you put it on the right layers. As we have already done a DXF import, we're not going to repeat that here. Add text using the place string command to include assembly instructions or fabrication notes. Again, hit tab to enter the text, and if needed, select the layer from the pull-down menu. Using a specific named mechanical layer, in this case, Board Outline allows for printouts to include the needed layers in the PDFs when you reference them. Once the graphics, text, and design of the PCB template are complete, save the base PCB file and then add signal or power plane layers if needed, and edit the layer names in the Layer Stack Manager window to match your company standards for designs and then save the file. Including graphics and text as part of the template provides a company-consistent uniform look for your PC boards. Now that we've added schematics and a PCB template to the project, let's continue to augment the project starting with the project parameters. Looking at the project options, we see we are starting with a number of parameters already added. To add a new parameter, click on the Add and fill out the parameter name with no spaces. We will add My Project Parameter and then the value Empty for the text. As we saw from the schematic templates, using a project parameter allows for global assignment of place text. We will now add a Draftsman template to our template project. To do so, we will first want to set up the path for the Draftsman template in Altium using the DXP Preferences under the Draftsman folder, Templates. Set it to the Exercise Templates directory for the templates. Now clicking on the project file, we will add New, pick Draftsman file, and pick the size B assembly template. Click OK. This will pull in the current project's PCB and create a Draftsman drawing based upon it. Here we see the Draftsman document. Not much to look at at this point because the PCB is blank. Now we will add OutJob to the project as this would be an efficient way to generate all the needed files for fabrication and assembly. Click on the project and then add Existing and select OutJob. Navigate to the OutJobs and add all three. Taking a look at the documentation OutJob, let's click on the Change button for the Schematic Prints PDF container to see the project parameters being used for naming of the files. We are using the docnosch parameter and appending underscore sch to it. The preview window shows the resulting naming. As you remember, this allows the project's parameters that we had already defined to drive the output file names. It's very powerful. Clicking on Generate, we see the resulting PDF file for the schematics parameter with the project parameter A123 used for the naming. To add the Draftsman documentation to the OutJob, click on the Documentation Outputs Add New Document output and pick Draftsman and select the B Draftsman template. Enabling it for the schematic print, we now have set up Draftsman for the OutJob. I went ahead and packaged up the project, and then I'm copying it into the Altium template directory. Once copied, we'll now use it for the defaults when creating a new project file. Open up the DXP Preferences and click on System, New Document Defaults. Here we will set the New Documents default field for the project by clicking on the three dots and navigating to the template directory to select the copied template project file. We'll do the same for the schematic and the template PCB file, and finally the Draftsman template file as well. Now we can use the predefined project template by right-clicking on the Projects panel window and selecting Add New Project PCB. 
This we use the defaults we just set up. At this point, you'd most likely want to save the project with a new name. The other way to access and use the template project is to use the familiar File, New Project, PCB Project, and scroll down and select the Size B Template option. Either way works and sets up a new project from the template project. This completes the instruction on template creation and use. Please do the exercises on templates.